All right, we just had the chainsaw out, did some trimming on our hemlock logs. These are some chunks of hemlock, and we're gonna get rolling with our 2023 outdoor experiments here, and this is gonna be experiment number one. We're gonna try and get some hemlock reishi growing on some hemlock logs. I just uh, cleaned them up with the chainsaw. It's always a good idea to put some fresh cuts on them before you inoculate them. So we're gonna use our bucket totem tech that I've showed you guys before. Just cut these into two eight inch pieces. We're gonna stack them on top of each other in these seven gallon buckets. So for spawn, I have two bags of sawdust spawn. And this is actually from our video entitled Cloning the Mushroom of Immortality, where I actually cloned some fruit bodies off of one of my most legendary hemlock reishi trees. So this is sawdust spawn of Ganoderma suge or Ganoderma lucidum suge, depending on what school of taxonomy thought you're from. But uh, either way, that is hemlock reishi mycelium on pasteurized hardwood fuel pellets so that's our sawdust spawn and we're gonna spawn these log chunks up and then get them in these buckets to incubate so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a layer of spawn on the bottom log chunk layer of spawn sandwiched in between and then layer of spawn on top we're gonna pop our lids on our buckets and each bucket just has a hopefully you can see that there has a small hole drilled in the rim just so they can breathe a little bit and we'll leave them in here for a couple months for incubation. And by then this reishi mycelium should be totally covering these hemlock log chunks. And then we'll go ahead and figure out a fruiting strategy. Now these likely won't fruit off of these logs until next spring. So it's gonna be kind of a long-term project, but uh, I wanted to try and grow reishi on outdoor logs for a while. And I think I have a pretty good plan, so we'll see if it works. And being that I have this cool strain that I was able to clone myself, I figured this would be a good opportunity to give this technique a try. So I'm going to bust this sawdust spawn up, and uh, we'll get our totems rolling. These are our totems from last year's Bucket Totem Project. These are the Michigan Oyster, and we did get some nice really nice oyster mushrooms off of these last fall so you can see how much mycelium is still covering those logs so that hopefully is what our hemlock logs are going to look like uh, once they're done so no oyster this spring I'm gonna switch it up and do an oyster the last couple of years I'm gonna try some reishi this time so i have four buckets worth of chunks all chunked up out there ready to go in the yard and we have four buckets ready with lids so you can, as long as you have a hole drilled in the bucket like this so they can breathe a little bit, you can go ahead and snap those lids on tight. And uh, let's break the spawn up and make some totems. Made plenty of spawn. I'm gonna have way more than I need, so I'll be able to spawn these up pretty heavy. Nice even layer on the bottom there. When you cut your log chunks to length, you always got to cut them a little shorter because as you add spawn, obviously, it's going to add some length to your log. So don't forget to do that. have some extra spawn which I definitely do and just kind of sprinkle it down inside the bucket snap a lid on that's it one done when you're working outdoors you don't have to be super sterile I am wearing a glove and I try and keep things relatively clean but I'm doing outdoor inoculations you don't don't have to get obsessed with the sterile tech it's 
really not a big deal. Whew. That one just barely fits. Good to go. I'm just gonna leave these incubate for a couple months, guys. And by that time, they should be totally plastered with reishi mycelium. Definitely just keep them out of direct sun and out of the wind. And I'm just gonna leave them on the patio in the shade here. It's the north side of my house, so this should work great. And the buckets will do the rest. All right, guys, it's been about a month that our reishi logs have been incubating in our buckets. And I just wanted to give you an update, show you what they're looking like after a month. I did notice it was looking a little dry in there, so I did miss some water in there a couple times. You can see now it's doing a nice job maintaining the moisture in the bucket, nice condensation on the inside walls, that's what you want to look for. Nice and white on top. I noticed the reishi mycelium isn't as aggressive as the oysters typically are. They're not really like crawling the outside of the bark really aggressively like the oysters typically do but they do seem to be traveling down the log. I'm sure they're moving through the wood grain nicely. Everybody looks happy. So just keep in mind that you may have to mist in your bucket a little bit if things are looking dry. I do just have this one quarter inch hole drilled in the side of the bucket. Other than that, I have the lid snapped on tight so that that little quarter inch hole does provide a little air exchange so you don't suffocate your mycelium. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with how these look. I'm not seeing a lot of mold buildup. Sometimes you'll see some trichoderma building up when you're doing these outdoor projects on your logs. A little bit isn't a big deal, but if you get a ton of it, it can be a problem. So that's one thing you want to look for too. But you definitely want to keep it nice and moist. So if it's looking dry in your bucket, you can mist it up a little bit with some distilled water, which is what I did here. I'm going to leave these in the buckets probably another three, four weeks, unless it gets really hot out. If it gets consistently in the 80s and 90s, I'm just going to take them out of the bucket because I don't want them to overheat and get real hot in the buckets. That can lead to big trichoderma blooms or other contamination, mycelium dieback, all kinds of bad stuff. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I have some other outdoor mushroom projects that I'm um, just getting ready to get rolling here now, so stay tuned. I'm going to have some more videos coming with some outdoor grows for 2023. But hit me up in comments. Let me know if you've done any outdoor reishi grows. This is a uh, first time for me. So my plan is I'm just going to take those logs once they're fully colonized and partially bury them in the ground, do like a log raft method that should keep them nice and moist. Uh, a lot of the really good reishi scores I find are on logs that are laying right on the ground and are nice and moist and mossy or else stumps of trees that are broken and fall off. So either way, high moisture content. So I'm thinking putting these logs partially buried in the ground will be a good technique get these mushrooms to grow so I'm pretty excited it's probably gonna take a year to turn out so obviously the rest of it will be coming in an update later but hit me up in comments let me know what you think let me know if you guys have done any outdoor reishi grows at all if you had success or what worked what didn't I always love hearing that stuff in comments and I will catch you next video